Onk Live Insights is a video editorial program produced by Onk Live. After the surgery is performed on a patient with a newly diagnosed glioblastoma, the important next steps include radiation therapy and chemotherapy. The radiation therapy is performed over the course of six weeks, five days a week, and this has been based upon studies that have been done over the past several decades. It was found in the early 1980s that there was significant survival benefit to be gained by adding radiation therapy to surgery for patients with newly diagnosed glioblastoma. So for the past several decades, radiation therapy has been employed for patients with this disease. What's changed over the past several decades is that the radiation techniques have become much better, much more focused, and this has allowed the patient to have better response to radiation with perhaps fewer side effects, less damage to normal surrounding tissue. The chemotherapy that is utilized as standard of care for patients with newly diagnosed glioblastoma is temozolomide. And temozolomide is an alkylating agent that does cross the blood-brain barrier. It is utilized in a specific way along with the radiation therapy and then following a break after the six weeks of combined chemotherapy and radiation therapy, it is then used in a five day on, 23 day off regimen over the course of six months. Once the surgery is complete and we have the histopathologic diagnosis of glioblastoma, we usually bring the patient back about two weeks after surgery to get their stitches out, make sure the wound is healing, and if everything's going well, it's time for them to sit down with the radiation oncologist and our medical oncologist to get started on therapy. These days, the start of the therapy is known as the Stroop protocol, whereby a patient gets about six weeks of radiotherapy, uh, which includes Monday through Friday treatments that total about 60 gray of radiation, along with daily temozolomide. The temozolomide dose that's given is 75 milligrams per meter squared on the patient, about half the dose that they get once the radiation is complete. And they get that temozolomide each day along with their radiation treatment for about six weeks. After the radiation and chemotherapy uh, are done in their combined uh, modality, we give the patient a little bit of a break of about three or four weeks before starting their monthly temozolomide, which includes typically five pills per month and then 23 days off. So you, every four weeks you get a cycle where Monday through Friday you take a daily dose of 150 milligrams per meter squared of temozolomide. And then 23 days off, we check a blood count to make sure we're not having any problems with hematopoiesis, especially low platelets we often find with temozolomide. And if the patient's doing well, they go ahead and start their next cycle, you know, the next month. We typically, our practice has been to do at least six months of the monthly temozolomide after the radiotherapy. Very often, if the patient is doing well and shows no sign of progressive disease, we continue that up to 12 months. Where we uh, run into problems, and with glioblastoma this is a common occurrence, is we see tumor growing back, often in the four to eight month period. At that time, uh, our team usually looks to other experimental protocols that are out there, as there's nothing that is working consistently. Now bevacizumab has been uh, introduced and available uh, uh, through the Food and Drug Administration for about seven or eight years now. And we do find bevacizumab or Avastin is very good for our patients, especially if they have a lot of edema, a lot of swelling, and a lot of mass effect in the brain because it clamps down on the ability of the tumor to attract and build a new blood vessel system and that shuts down a lot of the swelling inside the brain and it does tend to increase the patient's survival a bit, although it's mostly a um, tumor static agent as opposed to a tumor tumorcidal agent. It palliates the patient, gives them some extra time, but in and of itself has, uh, has not been as effective an agent as we had hoped when that drug first came out. And the other thing to remember when we use the bevacizumab is that we have to be sure that we're not going to need to do any surgical procedures anytime soon because once a patient is on the bevacizumab, we need them to be off at least six to eight weeks before doing any surgery because their 
uh, bleeding and wound complications because of that antibody lingering for a long period of time and inhibiting the blood vessels that are necessary for wound healing. Dexamethasone, which is a potent steroid medication, can be beneficial for patients who have glioblastoma because of its profound effects upon edema that can surround the tumor and cause the patient to have severe neurologic symptoms. Dexamethasone is an important tool in control of symptoms in patients who have glioblastoma. The edema that surrounds the patient's brain tumor can often be the cause of worsening neurologic symptoms than the tumor itself would cause. Dexamethasone, a potent steroid, can be an important mechanism for improving symptoms that result. However, it's imperative to consider the side effect profile of dexamethasone, including immunosuppression, and equally important to consider the possibility that dexamethasone may play a role in tumor resistance to therapeutic agents. For patients with newly diagnosed glioblastoma, one of the important discussions and one of the topics that is often raised in the course of both the multidisciplinary brain tumor conference and also in the initial discussions with a patient in their family who has a newly diagnosed glioblastoma is the opportunity to enroll in clinical trials. Because of the challenging nature of glioblastoma and because of the paucity of therapies and the minimal efficacy of some of them, it's very important to consider clinical trials in this patient population.